become emboldened because of the fall of Afghanistan. A lot of people said that uh, ISIS was absolutely defeated in Iraq, but uh, starting 2019, ISIS activities started again. And within the last three months, they've been really aggressive in reorganizing, setting up checkpoints, attacking uh, people around Kirkuk area and other places uh, in Iraq. And these attacks, it is really Iran showing its infiltration, its might uh, against the American interests inside Iraq. Um, when I speak with my Iranian sources, they say Iranian government laughs when we say Iraq. They say Iraq is not uh, an independent country anymore. Iraq is really Iran 2.0. So um, this is what we had feared. Um, now, before it was ISIS mainly that we were afraid of. Today, we are afraid of the Iranian influence in Iraq. And also, there is uh, an army of uh, Shabak. Shabaks are... Um, a, uh, a minority group that has come about three, four hundred years ago to uh, Iraq, and they're backed by Iranians. They are wreaking havoc inside the Nineveh Plain. So uh, before it was just ISIS we were afraid of, and Al Qaeda. Today it's the Iranian influence, the Shabak influence. Well, In let's talk about it. Let's talk a, a minute about ISIS because when he recently uh, met with French President Macron, uh, Kurdistan President Barzani said the Kurds need help to fight Bash ISIS. So is ISIS regenerating? Yeah, I Absolutely. mean, you said they're, they're a big threat. Uh, I mean, how big of a threat are they? Uh, it is very serious because what happened was many uh, refugees from Syria flown, came into Iraq. They flew uh, or they walked through across the border. They came to Iraq uh, from Syria. Um, a lot of them, the unemployment is just devastating in Iraq. The economy has absolutely collapsed. The healthcare system is collapsed, so it is very easy to be able to infiltrate these camps that these Syrians and other Iraqis that uh, potentially um, were maybe pro Saddam Hussein in the past. They are Sunnis that are disgruntled and they feel marginalized. And they are, it's very easy to bribe these individuals to join their forces, the ISIS forces, because people are hungry, people are tired. Uh, COVID has really wreaked havoc on. Uh, Iraq on Iraqi population. So it's very easy to recruit uh, ISIS militants. We are really looking at an, a region or a country that is, has, is being controlled by other forces. And we really have to come to the aid of the Iraqi government and the Kurdish government to be able to um, keep Iraq together. And Juliana, you were recently nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize for all the work you've been doing throughout the uh, years with the organization that you founded, the Iraqi Christian Relief Council. And I'd wish you luck, but it's really hard work and God's blessings has gotten you to this point. So tell us a little bit about the mission of the organization. And I, I know you're continuing to help a lot of Iraqi Christians uh, throughout the region, not just in Iraq. Yes, uh, we founded Iraqi Christian Relief Council in 2007. Uh, there was a gap in the American media about the Iraqi Christians, the Assyrians, Chaldeans, and Syriacs. And we uh, really acro travel across the world, especially in the United States, with a mission to raise awareness, educate everyone about who the Iraqi Christians are. We ask for prayers and we raise funding. We're not in doubt. We really heavily rely on people's uh, goodness and financial sacrifices. And the money that we raise goes to Iraq for those who are left behind or who refuse to leave Iraq to help rebuild their lives. And uh, we also, as you mentioned, we help uh, refugees in Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan who are living really in subhuman conditions. Uh, amidst their suffering, they have not, not lost faith in Lord Jesus Christ. And, and they're still suffering now, even uh, seven years after the uh, ISIS onslaught of the Christian villages like Karakosh, uh, also uh, Mosul and the battle there in 2017. They are still not gone and the people are still suffering. Okay, God's favor for the Nobel Peace Prize for you, but win or lose, Juliana, you're a winner to us. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts with us today. Thank you so much. Please pray um, for me, for my ministry, as this uh, Nobel nomination is not, does not really belong to me. It belongs to those who have suffered tremendously for their faith, for those women and children that are suffering today in Afghanistan. Christians in Afghanistan are absolutely devastated. We're standing for it with them, uh, Christians in Nigeria, Christians in Iraq and elsewhere, uh, and really for all of humanity. I pray that God, if he sees us deserving, 
uh, we will bring it home and we will be able to raise awareness uh, on the persecuted people and those who are suffering. Okay, Thank the, you. Su the suffering continues. God bless. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you so much. For an in-depth look at trends in the news, be sure to catch Global Lane this evening. It begins at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on the CBN News Channel. You can also find it online or simply download the CBN News.